Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 6. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 4 of Book 6. Now, in this proposition, we have two triangles that are equal angular. In other words, the three angles inside of one triangle is the same three angles inside the other triangle. And if we have two equal angular triangles, then the ratios of the ang of the sorry the ratios of the lines opposite the equal angle angles so gamma and c are equal so the lines opposite the equal angles is bc and ce let's take the ratio of that that will also be equal to the ratio of ac and de which are the sides opposite of the equal angles alpha and a so AC to DE will be equal to BC to CE. And likewise, that will also be equal to the ratio of the sides opposite the angle B and beta. Not only that, the ratios of the sides of the triangles on either side of the equal angles, so gamma and C again are equal, so the sides around these two angles, BA to AC, will be equal to CD to DE. Likewise, AB to BC will equal DC to CE. And finally, AC to BC will equal DE to EC. So this proposition states that all of these relationships, all these relationships between the ratios are true between two triangles that have equal angles inside. So to start this proof, let's start with our two triangles, and we're going to line up the base, BC and CE, such that they form a straight line. Now we're going to extend the side of this triangle, BA, and we're going to extend the size of this triangle, DE, and they meet at the point F. Now first, we have to demonstrate that these two lines actually will meet. Now we have this triangle ABC, so alpha plus beta must be less than two right angles, Proposition 17, Book 1, but beta is equal to B. So if we take, if we remove beta and replace it with B, we have alpha plus B is less than two right angles. So if alpha plus B is less than two right angles, then these two lines will eventually meet at point F and that's from postulate five of book one. So now we have two lines, AF and CD, that's crossed by a third, where the interior and the exterior angle are equal. And by definition, or sorry, not by definition, by proposition 28 of book one, that means that BF and CD are parallel. Similarly, we have the lines AC and FE, where we have an internal and external angles that are equal. And again, by Proposition 28 of Book 1, that implies that AC and FE are parallel. So these two lines are parallel, and these two lines are parallel, which means that AFDC is a parallelogram. And if it's a parallelogram, then AF equals CD, and AC equals FD, Proposition 34, Book 1. Now let's look at this larger triangle, BFE. It's been cut by a line AC that is parallel to the base. So from Proposition 2 from this book, we have that AB to AF equals BC to CE. But AF equals CD. So if we cross out AF here and replace it with CD, we have AB to CD equals BC to CE. Now I'm just going to write that down here. This is exactly the same thing. I'm just writing it down here because I want to refer to it later. But look at what this is implying. A, AB is opposite of beta. CD is opposite of B these two angles are equal. So we're taking the ratio of the sides of the triangles 
that are opposite the equal angles, and it's equal to BC to CE. Again, the sides of the triangles that are opposite equal angles. So we have partially shown this proposition. We have more to do, but here's a partial proof of this proposition. Now if we have AB to CD equals BC to CE, according to Proposition 16 of Book 5, and I'm just going to read it directly, if four magnitudes be proportional, they will also be proportionally alternatively. Now, uh, you may have forgotten what that is, so I'm going to write this as a fraction because most people are more familiar with fractions from high school and it might be a little more clear as a fraction. This is not part of the proof, this is just a way of visualizing and remembering what that postulate actually was referring to. If we have a fraction, AB to CD, that is equal to BC to CE, and if we multiply both sides by CD over BC. So I'm going to multiply it on both sides, BC, CD over BC. So I've taken an equality and I've multiplied it by the, by the same thing on both sides of the equal sign, thus keeping the equality. And now that cancels and this cancels and we are left with AB over BC equals CD over CE. So this is fractions, but it is also true of ratios. So we have AB to BC equals CD to CE. All right, and as I said, this is not actually part of Euclid's proof, but I thought we could all just use a little reminder of what this Proposition 16 of Book 5 was referring to. So we have AB to BC equals CD to CE. Now let's look at our triangle, triangle again, but this time look at the line DC that cuts our triangle. DC is parallel to AF, so we know that again by Proposition 2 of Book 6 that DE to FD will be equal to CE to BC. But AC is equal to FD, so we can cross out this FD and replace DE to AC equals CE to BC. Now again, I've just taken this and I've rewritten it here, and I want to look at what we've actually demonstrated here. AC is opposite of alpha, DE is opposite of A. So again, we're looking at the ratio of the lines that are opposite equal angles, and that ratio is equal to BC, which is opposite of gamma, to CE, which is opposite of C. C and gamma are equal, so again, it's the ratio of the sides that are opposite the equal angles. So these relationships, proportions between the sides, is the first part of this proposition, the one that refers to the sides which subtend the equal angles. Carrying on, because we're not done. Now, DE to AC equals CE to BC, using the same Proposition 16 of Book 5, we are going to take the alternate ratios. So we have BA to, sorry, BC to AC equals CE to DE. And this was the same thing that I had just scribbled using the fractions. There's nothing new. It's exactly the same process. And if we have AB to BC is equal CD to CE, and BC to AC equals CE to DE, we can, if we look at these two relationships, we can cross these out, 
and we get AB to AC equals CD to DE according to Proposition 22 of Book 5. So finally we have this I've already described. Now let's look at AB to BC equals CD to CE. What is that? AB to BC around the angle alpha is equal to CD to CA, which is around the angle A. So we are looking at the relationships between the ratio of the sides around equal angles. So BA to BC equals CD to CE. Likewise, BC to AC, BC to AC, which is around the angle beta, will be equal to CE to DE, which is around the angle B, which is also an equal angle. And finally, around the angles gamma and C, which are equal, we have that AB to AC equals CD to DE. So all of these bits here in blue have been demonstrated that if we have two equal angular triangles, all these relationships between the ratios holds true.